Everyone, welcome to the show. So remember Solomon Pena? <laughs> I know it's hard to keep track of all the right-wing politically motivated violence lately, so just to refresh your memory, this is the failed Republican candidate with a criminal history who was accused of orchestrating shootings at homes of various New Mexico officials. So this took place after the 2020 election. Thankfully, no one was injured or killed, but if you guys recall, there were bullet holes found in the home just above the bed of one of the official's 10-year-old daughter. Um, and in fact, the drywall dust landed on her face while she was sleeping, and she went and told her parents that she thought a spider was crawling on her face. So Pena and some of his alleged co-conspirators were arrested in January of this year, and they were facing state charges. Well, now they've been indicted by a grand jury on federal charges of conspiracy to commit these shootings, also election interference, and then various firearm offenses. So according to the federal indictment, Pena paid and enlisted the assistance of 41-year-old Demetrio Trujillo and his 21-year-old son, Jose Trujillo, to obtain guns and vehicles to carry out these shootings. And these, this was for political reasons. So all three of the men are now in police custody. Pena and the elder Trujillo were arrested in January of this year, and then Jose Trujillo was arrested this week. So the indictment also mentions four unnamed co-conspirators, and then it shows that in mid-November of 2022, Pena wrote to another failed Republican candidate, a woman named Lisa Meyer Hagen, and he said, quote, we have to press the attack. They want us to become hopeless and give up. And then in early December, Pena wrote to her again, and he said, quote, we can't just sit around being angry. We have to act. I'm continuing my study of election rigging. The enemy will eventually break because they are committing intentional wrongs and all humans eventually make mistakes. Wow. Well, that was really prescient uh, and, and uh, about himself. Anyway, Meyer Hagen isn't implicated in any of this, so I, I don't want to leave that impression. Uh, and she has refused to comment when journalists have reached out to her, but she was referred to as a close political ally of Pena. So with Pena's very serious criminal history and having already spent seven years in prison, if he's convicted of these crimes, the mandatory minimum sentence is 60 years. Um, and the Albuquerque, New Mexico police chief told a news outlet that he has no doubt that Pena was motivated by Trump's false claims of election fraud. And he noted that Pena claims to have been at the Capitol on January 6th, which I told you guys about months ago. I reported on that. Um, also, according to New Mexico officials, they're now in the process of implementing a new law to keep public officials addresses private. And they said that it's a direct response to, quote, doxing threats and instances of harassment and violence directed at public officials in recent years. Um, so this should be the norm on the federal level, you know, with Trump and Republican officials out there perpetuating the myth of widespread election fraud and with Trump's base becoming more and more unhinged and violent. This absolutely needs to happen on a federal level. Think about what all has taken place. I think sometimes we lose sight of it and it's just become normalized in, you know, Trump's MAGA America. But just think about even just in the last year alone, Nancy Pelosi's husband was attacked by someone spouting right wing talking points. A man tried to shoot up an FBI office after Trump's resort was searched for the classified documents, you know, he was killed in the process. And in between that, we had this, we had these violent Trump related, politically motivated events with Pena, these shootings. And, you know, if you go back further, we had the plot to kidnap and kill the Michigan governor because of COVID, the attack at the Capitol, the attack on the Biden bus, even before the 2020 election, numerous mass shootings, 
at LGBTQ nightclubs and bars, places of worship, um, schools, grocery stores, shopping malls. The vast majority, by the way, have been spurred on by right-wing vitriol and lies and right-wing refusal to to keep guns out of the hands of dangerous people. That's what has allowed so many of those shootings. They are out of control. So we can't lose sight of this and, and we have to keep it in perspective. This would have been unthinkable if, even five years ago, right? If five years ago, I told you everything that I laid out that entire list of what I just shared with you, you would have thought you're crazy gina there's no way there's no way that the republican party is going to let it get that bad that they're going to let it go that far and that they're going to you know cow to trump that much that our country is going to end up in that position that's how far they've fallen anyway guys when I hear more about Pena and his co-conspirators, I'll let you know. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Please like, share, and subscribe. Please donate if you can. Love you all. Take care, and I'll talk with you soon.